Hey, what's up, Rechurch family? So sorry I couldn't be there with you tonight. Melissa and I are taking a much-needed break, just a few days here to get our batteries recharged as we're going within to the new year. And I didn't leave you empty-handed tonight. Landon Schott's coming to be able to bring forth a prophetic word. And, well, before he does, you know, him and I have been in a relationship for now 17 years, but we've also been in a fantasy football league for seven years. And I, I just want to be able to tell you guys that this year I, I won the league, and, and well, Landon didn't, but he also not only lost in the league, he lost a bet, another bet to me. And so tonight he's wearing a very special shirt that I've chosen for him that I want you guys just to be able to let him know how good it looks on him. He pulled a picture from my social media 10 years old of a, of a sweater vest that I wore 10 years ago and wanted to make fun of me in our football chat room. So he already lost the bet that he's got to wear whatever shirt I chose for him. So, well, I choose this shirt. Landon, I hope you look like you're wearing your daddy's shirt because I'm still your fantasy football daddy. Love you. God bless you. We'll see you soon. I just feel witchcraft in the air. Just, just this lying spirit. <laughs> foul spirit I'm a man of my word amen kids don't bet for all those that are against betting that pastor Chris just preached on it that's how the the this Judas was replaced so there is betting in the Bible just kidding no I lost a bet I'll take it like a man and uh, so now I have to wear pastor Chris's and and he's lying he didn't wear this 10 years ago but I'm just gonna honor it right now <laughs> Let's not do social media tonight. Let's just put our phones away and just receive. <laughs> you kids and your phone. We're going to have internet technology difficulties tonight. Anyway, I got a word tonight. Vest or no vest. How many ready for the word of God? Get honed in. Get honed in. 2 Samuel chapter 23. I love God's word. I feel like I have a specific word for this house. I know it's prophetic because the Lord's been dealing with me with Second Sam or Second Samuel twenty three for a few months since since la even before the last time I ministered here on a Wednesday night, and I haven't been able to shake this this message and. Uh, Pastor Chris asked me to, to minister. He said, minister on whatever you want. Many of you follow me on social media and know the Lord put a, a prophetic word in my heart for the body of Christ on mercy. And uh, Pastor Chris was given a specific word by God over this house car, called overflow. And when I travel and minister, I minister around the nation. Uh, and, and when God gave me a word of mercy, that's to the body of Christ in America as a whole. And, and when God gave a specific word to Pastor Chris over this house of overflow, the two words coincide. But when I when asked the Lord to, to speak to me, I instantly heard him say, speak on overflow. And I was like, all right, let's, let's get after it. And literally, I instantly, he said, go back to 2 Samuel. So here we go. Let's go there together. It'll be up on your screen. Grab your Bible. 2 Samuel 23 it says this, during the harvest time, three of 30 chief men came down to David at the cave of Adullam, with the band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would give me a drink from the water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So three mighty men, someone say mighty men, <laughs> broke through the Philistine line. Say broke through and drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem and carried it back to David, but he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. Far be it from me, O Lord, to do this, he said. It is not the blood of men who went to risk their lives, and David would not drink it. The title of this message this evening is Creating Overflow. Let's pray. So Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. We declare, have your way. 
Lord, we declare that your word is the highest authority in our lives. We declare it's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Father, we lift up right now the name of Jesus. We declare your name is above every name. And we declare your name is exalted today. Father, I pray right now that you would give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying. Lord, we came tonight to hear from you, to hear from heaven. So we declare, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. And everyone who loves God and loves his word, say amen Amen. and amen. The prophetic word over this house of 2017, Pastor Chris ministered at the New Year's Eve service. If you didn't hear it, I really encourage you to go to the podcast and you can listen to it or you can watch it. But he said, it's a year of overflow. And we know that last year was a year of jubilee. And and, and I want to talk about this. What does it mean to be a prophetic word? Because a lot of people say they're prophetic and it's not prophetic. And, and, and a lot of people give prophetic words, but we don't know how to receive prophetic words. Just because a prophetic word is given does not mean it's guaranteed. A prophetic word is an invitation for you to come in alignment with the perfect will of God for your life or a certain season. It's an invitation. It's not guaranteed. It's an opportunity for you to come in a line and receive it. So when the word of Jubilee was given forth, Heather and I came in unity and we said, we are going to receive this word. Hear it. There was a yes in our spirit that this is a word for us. Not only was it it, uh, a word that we received, but it was a word that we took faith and action in and we received it. All of the blessings of Jubilee, we personally experienced this year. So after Jubilee, they would, they would store up so much that they would have overflow. You'll, you'll, you'll get this if you heard that message or you listened to the podcast. And this was the word over the house, overflow. And I heard in my spirit that I was supposed to minister on this. Here's what Pastor Chris said. He said, if God is giving his best, we are required to give ours, or it means that we are required to take action. Just because a prophetic word is given does does not mean it's going to come to pass if you do not come in alignment with it. A lot of people think prophetic words are just fluffy, goofy, uh, you know, fun things that are spoken over people. It's not true. A lot of times prophetic words are correction. A lot of times prophetic words are warnings to look out for things. And if you take heed to those warnings, then you'll be spared the consequence of what's coming around or you'll be prepared for what God wants to do next. Hmm. I feel this strong in my spirit. If this is a prophetic word of overflow, it means that there's going to be a significant task in 2018 that we will need, be need to have that overflow for. I feel that strong in my spirit right now. Overflow. First, Second Samuel chapter 23. This is the story of David and his mighty men. This is David before he's the king. This is David in the, in the cave of Adullam. You all know the story of David and, and, and Goliath. He kills Goliath. He wins favor. They sing the songs that Saul has slain thousands, but David attends a thousand. He became insta-popular or social media famous before there was social media. And Saul became very jealous of him. So he started to try to hurt him. And, and, and then he actually tried to kill him. So David had to flee because his life was in danger. And the Bible said that disgruntled or offended or broken individuals that were uh, crushed in their souls and spirits, they gathered around David and they went into a cave rejects. But the Bible says that something happened in that cave. Something happened in that season of pressure. Like when Pastor Chris said, pressure will either crush you or make a diamond out of you. I rebuke you, Daniel, right now in Jesus' name, taking pictures. And it, but, but one of those things... It's either going to crush you or it's going to make something great inside you. And those men were in a cave of Adullam. And the Bible says that they came into the cave as rejects, but they walked out of the cave as mighty men. 
So 2 Samuel 23 is telling you the story of what some of these mighty men did. Some of them took on other giants because David was the first giant killer, but he raised up an army of giant killers. One went and killed a giant with six, uh, six fingers on his hand. Another one went into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And three individuals that were mighty men heard David in the middle of an intense battle desire water. Hear this tonight. Three men weren't told what to do. They weren't instructed. They weren't given an assignment. It wasn't a mandate. They overheard, watch, the king's heart's desire. See, you're not going to hear the king's desire unless you're close to the king. You're not going to hear the, the heart of the Father unless you're spending time with the Father. I tell you my prayer every single year when I'm asking the Lord for a prophetic word over the body of Christ or Reach Church. I'll tell you what I've been praying all week for Reach Church. Father, give me your heart for your people. If you stop asking for God's hand and start asking for his heart, you get it all. They weren't told what to do. They weren't picked. They just heard the king's heart's desire. And he said out loud, oh, that I would have water near the, near the uh, well, at the well near the gate of Bethlehem. And they took it upon themselves to put their life in jeopardy. And they fought their way all the way to the well, drew the water, got it in their possession, and brought it back to the king. Man, I, I could imagine what their faces were like when, when they risked their life, when they weren't asked to. You know, when, when, when ladies, when you clean the house and your husband got home and he didn't expect it or he came back from a long business trip and the house is just flawless. Or maybe you, maybe you did the dishes or cleaned the kitchen for your wife before she got home and you're just sitting there like, I did this. <laughs> and you're waiting for that response. Or you know when your kids make something or draw something or win an award, Peyton won the Joy Award at school, and she'd been wearing her little Joy trophy med necklace medallion thing, whatever they gave her, and, and, and she's been wearing it, telling everybody, I'll take her with me on a ministry trip. She's like, I got a Joy Award. <laughs> She'll ask me, Dad, we went to Seattle for vacation, go Seahawks, and we were there, and she said, she goes, Dad, can I bring my Joy Award? And, and her face, you know, when they just, they want to see how you're going to respond. I can imagine the three men and how they couldn't wait to see the face of the king when they brought him the water, waiting anxiously. And David takes the water and he dumps it out. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? I've preached this many different ways over the last 18 years of ministry. Occasionally, I'd have a youth kid when I do youth ministry go and get me a Starbucks in the middle of my sermon. And people are like, oh, I can't believe you do that. And they would come running back in at the end it, and I'd take it and dump it out. And their face would just go, <laughs> just mortified. Just, I hate church, you know, just leave. And that's just a cup that they had to drive two minutes away for. These guys risked their lives. And he dumped it out. I believe in this text is a hidden revelation. Do you know why I love God's word? Is that you can read the same story a thousand times. But when the Holy Spirit kisses it, that rhema comes alive and it says something new even though the text doesn't change. I believe that there's a revelation tonight for this house on creating overflow. How many ready to receive it tonight? Three ways to create overflow. Number one, from 2 Samuel 23, unity creates overflow. It says, so three mighty men broke through. It wasn't one. It wasn't the Lone Ranger. It wasn't the superstar. It wasn't the hot shot. It wasn't the world's greatest one-man show. It says three men got, to, got in unity. You've heard pastor preach many times on, on the synergy of unity. One puts a thousand a flight. Two puts 10,000 a flight. But a three chord strand is not easily broken. There is power in unity. Why do you think the Bible or why do you think the enemy works so hard to divide? Do you know you never have to work at division? Isn't it interesting how easy it is? I mean, it is so, you don't know how easy to just jump on Facebook. 
it is so easy to divide, but unity is intentional. Unity takes humility. Unity takes work. Unity takes effort. Let's look at another scripture in the word of God. Psalms 133. It says this, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. If you skip down to verse three, it says there, God commands a blessing. In unity, God commands a blessing. Hear this word. You will not receive overflow if you're divided. You're not gonna walk in overflow when you're divided in your marriage. You're not gonna walk in overflow when you're at each other's throats all the time. Unity is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Unity commands a blessing. Heather and I have found that when we stand in agreement together, when we unite our faith together, when we believe together, that's when we see the greatest demonstration of the power of God in our life is when we come to in agreement together. I felt like I was supposed to challenge you tonight to be in unity with your children. For some reason, I felt in prayer, I was supposed to challenge you. I feel like some of your children are believing God. They, 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 they need to be taught how to believe God. And you're supposed to challenge them and come in unity and agreement with your children, your teenagers. And then as I was praying for you, I felt the objection come. And I, I heard in my spirit someone say, well, what if God doesn't do it? And I felt like I was supposed to challenge you and say, it's as much for you as it is for them. I feel strong in my spirit that there's a, there's a, a, a family that needs to come in unity. I feel like in, in your children's school or, or in some sport, something, they're trying to accomplish something and it's going to take faith to do it. And if you would come in alignment with unity, you're going to see overflow begin to create in your family. There's individuals that are believing God to go to a place financially that you've never been before. And you've even talked in your marriage, maybe this word of overflow, maybe it's happening, maybe this is for us. And I came with the word for you tonight that if you come into unity, you're gonna see it come into fruition. Now watch out, here's the warning, the enemy comes to divide. I feel this so strong. If you get this prophetic word, it's gonna save so much pain. Is there a storm going on or something? Amber alert. Okay, hey, listen, listen. You are going to be fighting. I felt this so strong in my spirit. You're going to be fighting and it's going to come to you. This is an attack on unity. I'm telling you, the enemy will cause it. The enemy will lead you into it. You're going to have to not fight each other, but fight for unity. Let me show you one more one scripture about this. John 7, 38 says this. Whoever believes in me, scripture says, rivers of living water flow through them. So watch. When we carry Christ in us, when he lives and abides in us and us in him, the Bible says that we are rivers of living water. Are you with me? So when rivers come together, that's when floods happen. That's when there's natural overflow. This is why people that want to do the Lone Ranger church missions ministry thing all by them lonesome themselves and have a Facebook church. This is why they're not, there's no power in them because they don't get the unity that God teaches us about. So rivers have to come together and watch when the rivers come together, they form a body. Where there's a body of water, that's where there has to be enough water for precipitation to take place. And that is when the rains come, the, cl the clouds, the rains come from the precipitation from a body of water. When the body of Christ comes together and we become in unity, that's when we're going to see the Joel 2.28. That's why it says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh because the body has come together in unity. Watch what happened when you come in unity in your life groups. Watch what happens when you in, are intentional about unifying. I got to keep going. In God's house. Number one, unity creates overflow. Number two, pressing in with deeper devotion creates overflow. Pressing in. 
2 Samuel 23, verse 16 says, so there are mighty men, the three mighty men broke through the Philistine lines. Watch, they didn't walk in, they didn't skip in, their pastor didn't go for them. Hear it, they broke through. Overflow is created by pressing. And here's the thing, is the body of Christ has become spiritually lazy. We want someone on Facebook to pray for us. We want somebody to, 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 to war for us. That's when spiritual warfare comes. We, we feel that the effects of warfare, we don't know what to do. The church has become soft. The church has become weak. We don't know what God's word says. We're not devoted in God's word. So what happens is, as the enemy comes and we can't respond, it is written because we don't know what's written. Come on, hear this word tonight. We have to press in with our devotion for God. That's why at Reach Church and believers around the world are doing the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is, by, is, is pressing into your faith. It's pressing in with your spirit. The Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. We've allowed the flesh to become too strong in our lives. With our eating pattern, our flesh is too strong. With our mouths, our flesh is too strong. Probably the, one of the greatest fruit of the spirit that we lack is self-control. Why? Because our flesh is too strong. Just want to give them a piece of my mind. Our flesh is too strong. Come on, somebody. I need to put them in their place. Our flesh is too strong. If you want overflow in your life, you're going to have to press in. Can I just be real with you? I hate fasting. I like to eat. Anybody else? In fact, knowing I was going to fast this holiday, I ate a little extra. <laughs> you know, just hibernate, getting ready for it. I hate it. I did, I, we do 21-day fast every year. And, and last year when I was releasing my book, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I want you to do another 21-day fast. He said, now I want you to fast to those that you're gonna, for those you're going to minister to. So for 42 days, I didn't eat a bite of food in 42 days. I hated every minute of it. I don't like it. When my kids get Chick-fil-A, I just want to punch them. I don't look at my calendar. I'm like, yes, here comes a fast. No, I look at it and I'm like, oh, there it is. It's coming. It's like a dentist appointment. You're not like, yeah, let's go to the dentist. No, you're like, ah, oh, I got to go. I don't like fasting, but the reason I fast is because I love the results. Not the physical results, because I've seen year after year and scenario after scenario and month after month, I've seen the demonstration of God's power. Listen, fasting doesn't move God. It moves you. Yeah. I can't fast. No, you're just spiritually weak. Do you know I can't find one place in the Bible where they're like, all Israel came to a fast except for the people that had a hard time fasting. Esther called everyone to a three-day fast except for the people that didn't like it. Come on, somebody. Now, what was the number one thing that creates unity? Help me. My good. Help me. Unity. So watch. When your pastor calls a fast... Unity comes in alignment with that word and says, I, God didn't call me to fast when you're in this church. I'm not going to fast unless the Lord calls me to fast. Isn't it funny how the Lord's never called you to fast? <laughs> Jesus already came and finished the work, so we don't need to fast, except he told the Pharisees, after I leave, my disciples will pray and fast. Helps to know the word, right? Come on. I hate fasting, but I know my flesh is too strong that I have to fast so it will become weaker, so my spirit will come alive. I want to challenge you tonight. I felt specifically I was supposed to challenge you that have you not started to fast, fast with us. I'm not harping. I don't know who's fasting and who's not fasting. I just came to challenge you. Fast. Start now. Partial fast. Well, I don't know fast. I don't know how to fast. I just start fasting things you love. I don't know if I can do it. 
It's amazing. It's amazing what you can do when your flesh doesn't own you. Here, listen, 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 listen. I'm trying to help create overflow in your life. I'm trying to help create breakthrough in your life. If you want to go where you haven't gone yet in God, you have to do what you haven't done yet before. I'm trying to get you to a place, listen, that the enemy can't do his same tricks on you over and over, and the snares and traps of 2016 don't work in 2017 because you are ready for battle, because you are prayed up and fasted up, and you have pressed into the things of God. i got to keep going. You got to go listen to Pastor Chris's message because he talked about the threshing floor and that's a place of pressing. Number three, third thing is pouring out creates overflow. I wrote my message and then I went back and watched the New Year's Eve message and it was amazing how unified this message was what God put in my heart and what Pastor Chris declared over this house at the New Year's Eve service. His entire message was about giving to God and God gives to you. Listen, when we hear overflow, I don't know how your work mind works, but my carnal mind thinks I'm receiving. Overflow, I'm going to be blessed overflow. God, what are you going to give me? Overflow. What are you going to do in my life? Overflow. How much higher can I go over? Come on, somebody. Am I the only dirty dog here? I can't wait. It's like Christmas all year long. What are you going to do for me, God? That's not how you create overflow. That's how you stay in the same complacent, lukewarm place that you've been for years. That didn't get many claps. It's okay. It's okay. They don't have me preach because I make you shout. Here we go. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. Hear this. David refused to drink the water, but instead he took the water. He took the thing that was valuable. He took his heart's desire. And he poured it out. Now, this doesn't make sense for anybody. It doesn't make sense for the guys that got the water because then we do the spiritual thing of why did this happen? If God told me to do this, then how come it ended like this? If I really thought he said to do this, but now it doesn't make sense. And we're trying to figure it out, but we will not figure it out because his ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. Hear me. And the way that we find the perfect will of God is just by being obedient. He takes this water. And he pours it out. And as he pours it out, watch, it wasn't overflow until it hit the ground. The moment the water hit the ground, the entire well was his. David didn't desire a cup. He desired the well. Listen, he wasn't anointed king for a cup. He was anointed king for the entire city. For the entire, hear this word, for the entire region. He said, watch, what's in my hand must be poured out. And as I pour out what is valuable to me, God then in return pours out, when we pour out what's in our hand, he pours out what's in his hand. I'm going to show you a a funny picture. And then Aaron, I want you to start playing. Can you go to that next slide where you show that picture? Heather and I were in Dallas yesterday filming at Daystar. And we're about to go on and I got to go to the bathroom because I've been fasting. So I turned to the production lady. I was like, where's the closest restroom? And she goes, it's down that hallway in the dungeon. So I go down there, and I'm at the urinal, about to go on live TV. And I read this sign. Per management, please flush only one time. 
multiple flushes cause overflow. I thought, what a weird way to say that. Come on, Aaron, team, play with me. I'm reading this side, this sign. And I hear the Lord say, when you continuously pour yourself out, it will create overflow in your life. In our mind, watch this. We think that overflow will be created by us receiving. When overflow will be created by us giving. Can I, can I challenge you tonight? Don't believe God for an amount of money this year. Come into agreement with how much you're going to give by faith this year. What if the only number you thought about was what you were believing in your heart to in faith give? What if instead of worrying about what God was going to give you, what if you were obsessed with what you could give him? What if you stayed up at night instead of making a financial outline or a five-year plan? What if you dreamt about what you can do for God? What you can give? What you can pour out? What if you and your husband and wife got together and laid at night in bed instead of talking about the next vacation, talked about what you can do for the kingdom together in unity? What if you talked about what you can come to agreement with and believe God to do in your life? Watch the young men, the three mighty men poured themselves out to get the water. They came in unity together. Then David took that same water and poured it out before the Lord again. And then God said in return, I'm going to pour myself out to you and give you the kingdom that was prophesied. Stand to your feet all over this place. It's not overflow until it's poured out. I felt like I was supposed to ask you two questions. What's in your hand and what's in your heart? Some of you have thought about starting a life group more times than you could remember, but you haven't done it yet. It's still in your hand. Pour it out. Some of you have seen the Dream Team video so many times, and man, there's so many people here, and there's so many there. They, they don't need me. Oh. You need overflow. Pour yourself out. I'm telling you, some of you are so gifted in business. You've seen the hand of God bless you. I have a prophetic word for you tonight. You haven't seen nothing yet. When you get this revelation of overflow that came through our pastor, that what you've seen is just what's in your hand. Don't trade what's in your hand for what's, or don't trade, you have to trade what's in your hand for what's in God's hand. Don't hold on to it. For some of you, it's time. For some of you, it's personal sacrifice and devotion. For some of you, it's gifts. For some of you, it's treasure. This is a year of overflow. This is a year to pour yourself out. Bow your heads and close your eyes all over this place. One way that we pour ourselves out is in worship. This house is about to go into another realm of worship. But it, you go into that realm through the press. You go to that realm through the threshing floor. The threshing floor, the place of pressing, the place of brokenness, the place of sacrifice, the place of worship. This house has 
a prophetic word of overflow will you come into alignment with it tonight will you come in alignment with it this year if there's a yes in your spirit lift both hands to God begin singing Aaron come on let's begin to worship lift both hands to God I feel right now that the Lord is about to call you to action Pastor Chris talked about it in action I believe the Lord is speaking to your hearts amounts this year that you're going to give. I believe the Lord is speaking to you ministries that you're supposed to serve. I feel like the Lord is speaking to you uh, uh, actions of faith that you and your wife are supposed to do. I feel in my spirit the Lord is calling some of you to go to the next missions trip to Africa. The Lord is calling you to take a different step of faith that you haven't had before. Listen, if you're going to go where you haven't gone, you have to do what you haven't do. This is what God is calling calling us to go to a deeper place of intimacy with him this year that we hold nothing back we pour everything out come on let's end this service tonight by pouring ourselves out in worship let's give God everything we have tonight father I declare that this is a season of overflow a season of unity a season of deeper devotion a season of pouring ourselves out father I thank you God
everyone, can we put our hands together for Landon as well for that great, great word. Awesome. Thank you. I challenge you now, whatever God spoke to you about tonight, don't leave the church without making that decision and that practical move, all right? Maybe it's time to start that life group. We have life group leader training this Sunday, 11.45. Come to Classroom 107 and be trained. Start your life group, right? If you haven't joined the Dream Team yet, we have applications out in the hub. You don't have to leave and, and think, I'll do it later. You can create overflow now, right? So agree with your spouse, whatever you feel on your heart, don't leave the church without you doing, making that, that decision and making a practical move towards whatever God told you about tonight, all right? Hey, join the fast, do something, all right? We have our prayer team up here now. They want to pray with you. If you have a need in your life, we would love to pray with you. Stand in agreement with you. If you're not, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the overflowing power of God at work in your life, come up here. Talk to our prayer team. Let them pray with you and lead you to that experience, right? And let me speak a blessing over you before we leave as well. Father, we declare your blessing over your people tonight. Father, shine your face and your light. Place your favor upon each and every one in this room, everyone with us online, over our faith, our families, our finances, and our future. Let us walk with our heads held high because you made us head and not tail. You placed us over and not under. You blessed us and you have not cursed us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tonight. We see you in morning prayer live on Facebook this weekend. Have a blessed week.